Hello students and welcome to Flintastic Chemistry. I'm your teacher, Mr. Flynn. Today we're going to be learning about the band of stability. So this is essentially a chart that shows the proper ratios of neutrons to protons. Okay, because that's those are the two particles that are found in the nucleus of the atom. And if we notice here, there's this line here, and this line represents a one-to-one -one ratio of protons to neutrons. So in the beginning, it follows this line pretty well, and then it starts to veer off. Okay, so let's think about atoms like hydrogen and helium. Well, it's like a one-to-one -one or two-to-two, -two, right? They're, they're pretty balanced number-wise. But as the number of protons increases, our band tilts to the right here, bends toward the neutron side. And that's because protons are positively charged. And there's this electrostatic force where positive things don't want to be around each other. So they're going to repel each other. And to help break that up, we have neutrons. And if you'll notice as we keep going down at this end here, atoms are very unstable once they hit a certain size because they're so big that that strong nuclear force can't keep the atom together, right? There is an actual limit to how big atoms can get because they'll start to fall apart because they don't like, they like to be stable. They like to find that sense of homeostasis uh, within the nucleus of the atom. If they have too many protons, it's going to fall apart. If it has too many neutrons, it's going to start to decay. And if it's so big, it may even start releasing alpha particles. Okay. So just referring to the card again, um, that we learned before alpha, beta minus and beta positive. Okay. Now let's look here at our chart. Okay. Now we have this black line. That means that's a stable arrangement for those type of atoms because the pro protons show us the atomic number, which is what the atom is. And the number of neutrons helps gives us the different types of isotopes. So if we look here, if we notice there's a green and purple side, okay. And if we're going toward the purple magenta side, it means we're adding protons to our isotope. And what happens is if we have too many protons, it's not stable. So that proton is going to decay into a neutron and it's going to release a positron. So on this magenta side, we're going to have a lot of beta positive decay. And if you look under this chart on the green side, we're going to add neutrons. And because the nucleus doesn't want to hold on to that many neutrons, it's going to beta minus decay. And it's going to release electrons and form more protons. Okay. So these atoms like to form a balance and this beta minus and beta positive is what kind of keeps these, this, and when we graph the properties, it shows us that types of decay are present only if we have more protons or neutrons and we want to find that stable arrangement. Okay. Uh, we've been working with uranium this whole time. So let's, let's use uranium as an example. So uranium is 92. And if we come over here, it's going to have about 140 or so, uh, or maybe 143, 140. Uh, neutrons. And if you notice here, it's not in that black zone. Okay. Now we're getting into an area of the periodic table where it's very unstable. That's why uranium, plutonium are good examples of things that decay and they give off um, particles. And we can use that as energy for nuclear energy or creating bombs. And if we notice, there's a lot of yellow up here, meaning it can release alpha particles. It's also releasing beta and even um, beta positive and beta minus particles up in this area. They're very unstable up in here in this corner. But if you look down here, atoms near the top of the periodic table okay, are very stable. These are much more stable atoms. They're not, their nuclei are not going to be falling up. It's not going to be falling apart. While down here, the atoms are getting larger and they're becoming more unstable. So they tend to fall apart more easily. Okay. Now, uh, up here, there's a definition. Okay. Uh, the definition's okay up here, but the big idea, all right, is that they have a chart that's showing us the different types of decay and how electrons, or not electrons, protons and neutrons want to be arranged to form the most stable configuration. And there's actually these uh, fun numbers here. Okay, that show very stable arrangements. And there's actually a sequence to these of 2, 8, 20, 28, 50, 82, and 126. So if it has a number of protons or neutrons of these numbers, they're going to be very stable. And we solved the problem earlier um, from the last video where we took potassium and it underwent beta minus decay to release electron and it formed calcium 40. And it actually has 20 protons. 
And if we look down here, calcium is actually one of our magic numbers, our double magic numbers, because it has 20 of each. So calcium is actually a very stable arrangement of protons to neutrons. Okay. And you notice oxygen and helium are both in that category. All right. So certain atoms are given a little bit extra um, stability versus others. Okay. So, so you're not going to expect certain atoms to decay just because of how many protons and number ratio there are. Okay. So just keep that in mind as you go that not all atoms are going to decay. All right. Dirt, certain isotopes of atoms will decay. Okay. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time.